Hey, what's up guys? This is Liam or Weagle on your Overwatch back with a new video. Today, I want to talk about one of the most controversial abilities in the game and how to get more use out of it. I know that for a lot of people, Roadhog has been that solo carry to Grand Masters, but there are definitely still a lot of people that don't understand much of his hook, and I don't know if we'll ever fully understand it, but there's definitely some tips I can give to people to help you hook more people and also confirm more kills on some of the more annoying targets. I want to first, though, explain to you exactly the point in the animation where you're guaranteed to hit a hook. Now, I will reference a video we did a long time ago, which basically went through explaining if Rodog's hook was a hit scan or a projectile, and there's all kinds of videos on the internet contradicting each other with different opinions, and you can go and watch that one back if you like. We come to the conclusion that it's more like a delayed hit scan. Some people think it's a projectile. There's just no one really knows, to be honest. But one thing for sure is that the point on your screen now, if the person you are trying to hook is within the hitbox of the hook at that animation on your screen, you are going to hit the hook. I'll now show you a Genji going straight across my screen where I drag all the way across and it looks like I completely missed the hook. But if you freeze frame the part where I have actually landed the hook, it's where the animation of his hand pointing out is. Now that's the conclusion we came to in that other video, but I want to also talk about how to implement it. Now a lot of people treat it like it is a normal projectile, so what they will do is they will throw out the hook before the enemy gets there and try and predict their pattern. And A lot of people can see success in this, particularly in people that don't have great movement, for example. People that are jumping around all the time or counter strafing, we are very easy to hit and predict with this method. However, because it hooks when it's in this specific part of the animation, if they move out of the way, you can't hit them. So trying to predict it is actually the less reliable situation here. What you should be doing is tracking as if you're using a Zarya beam almost, or if you're trying to hit continuous headshots with McCree without letting go of the trigger. If you are trying to track the enemy all the way through the animation of the hook, you're guaranteed to hit it if you track it well enough. I mean, this just makes sense, right? If you've always got them in the middle of your screen and it's guaranteed to hit them at that part of the animation, then yeah, it's going to work. Now, I'm sure there's some hooks where you could find a still frame where it doesn't look like they're at the perfect part of this animation. I mean, this hook is so buggy and so so all over the place and always has been that I can only offer you a very, very good way to do it. And I can't say it's always going to be flawless. But again, it does explain why people get hooked around corners because if it's more of a delayed hit scan and you throw the hook out and get to that part in the animation, it's guaranteed to hit them. Like I've already said, every time I still frame any of these clips, it's always at that part of the animation. So. If you do that and then they go around the corner, it doesn't matter because you've already hooked them on your screen and it's just tough titties to the person on the other team, unfortunately. So once you hook them in, as I'm sure you guys know, you then need to just fire and then melee. You should always melee after in case your fire doesn't connect. But the next thing to talk about is uh, a little bit controversial too, is actually hooking in some more difficult targets like Anna, Reinhardt and a lot of the other bigger heroes in the game. There's also some smaller hero exceptions But I read somewhere that when you actually hook someone what it physically does is it lifts them off the ground slightly and drags them towards you This way if they're a bigger target when they get closer they hit the ground again first they stop quicker now, I don't know how true that is, but it does stay true in terms of hooking bigger targets. I tested it with Ryan, with Winston, and Anna is one of the smaller exceptions. You can't quite get them close enough to you to kill them in one shot. Now, there's a trick to do this, and I personally find it unreliable, but I will talk about it. Now, I could edit the video to seem like I do it every time, but honestly, I find this unreliable. What you do is you hook the enemy Anna, you look to the side with your mouse or your controller, and you actually strafe in that direction. So you move in the direction that you go to look to, and then it's supposed to drag them closer. I personally don't find this super useful. Yes, I can get it to work, but if you look away, you're less likely to be able to turn back and hit the shot. It doesn't always get them closer to you anyway, and sometimes it's more reliable to just hook someone you can definitely kill in one shot. Now, I've tested this while crouching. It didn't seem to make a difference. I tested it while jumping, and I found it slightly helpful sometimes, but overall, what I personally do when I play Roadhog 
is when I hook someone, I walk towards them, and then you have a very small gap of time to shoot them before they can hit you. So if you've hooked an Anna, there is a small amount of time where you can move forward slightly and one-shot them and melee sometimes to finish them off. Now, it's always going to be unreliable, and Blizzard is talking about reworking the hook in a way so that it's more fair not only to the person being hooked, but also for the Roadhog player who's trying to use that hook. Because at the minute, it doesn't feel fair from either side. As I mentioned before, yes, you can get hooked around corners, but sometimes you can hook someone fair and square, and you can't confirm that kill because they're not close enough. Now, another thing that's super buggy, and this isn't just on Anna either, is if you're actually really close to someone and you hook them, they actually move further away. So don't hook someone that's at close range because it's going to be more difficult than just trying to hit them with a normal shot. What's even worse than this is if you're close to someone and they're near a wall or some kind of object. Because when you hook them, not only do they go further, they can't physically go further because something's in the way and it sends them up into the sky, sometimes even behind you. It's absolutely insane. So don't hook anyone that's at close range. So that's all the ins and outs, really. But the most important thing of all to note is that when they're in this part of the animation, you're nearly always going to hit the hook. So when you hook, you just track them. You track them throughout their motion, throughout whatever they do, until that hook lands. Obviously, you're not always going to hit them all the time, but it's definitely more reliable than treating it as a projectile, because if you do that and they change direction, you're not going to hit them. However, if you're tracking them the whole time and you track that direction change, you will confirm the hook on them and then drag them closer, and then you've got to work out the other minutia on what character you've hooked, can you kill them in one shot, if it's Anna, probably not, maybe, and that stuff can't be taught. That just comes down to your own personal experience and how good you are at the hero. Honestly, try to avoid hooking Anna unless she's hurt or unless you get really good at that timing where you can move forward a little bit, shoot and melee, and hopefully she doesn't sleep you in the process. So guys, let me know what you think. The comment section is the place to go. I know there'll be some arguments about whether it is a hit scan or whether it is a projectile, but really, a lot of people don't really know, but I can guarantee you tracking is the way to go. Be sure to check out our Twitter, our Discord, and our Twitch. You can also group up with people in Discord, don't forget about that. There's usually over 5,000 users at any one time, which is a hell of a lot of people to potentially group up with. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed, and have a great day as always. Take care and peace, people.